to get a glass and get a little bit of that uh, fancy beer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let, let's, let's not pour you, it over. You pour the, it yourself. <laughs> uh. Ah, that's a good pour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kept having little, little four four ounce pours. It's a foamy boy. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hey. We still don't have a podcast. I thought they just gave these things out to anybody. It seemed that way in the beginning. I think that the problem is is that our greatest weakness is that we just care too much. Yeah, that's usually... That's what I always say in job interviews. Yeah. I usually say um, that I'm encumbered by my giant penis. (laughs) Oh, too damn big yeah i'm sure they love that i mean what are they gonna do ask me to see it no no but they i mean they might give you a wheelbarrow so it's you can get around a little better their curiosity enough to hire me though i bet yeah just throw uh, a real banger of a christmas party and see what happens yes yeah. oh i thought they were just like trying to peek over the divider at the urinals oh that too yeah they're like you're hired uh, hey uh everybody we're just uh we're to save to to save the environment. We're uh, installing these new uh, smaller dividers between the urinals. Um, please feel free to stand back uh, uh, three inches further than normal away from the urinal, and uh, you're gonna get some splash back. On whistle these loudly to let it. people know you're at the urinal right now. This is a great character I've made of the creepy boss who <laughs> yeah. wants to see your dick. Uh, he sh- he should really go about just putting in those nineteen uh, sixties trough style where it's like we're all boys, you know. <laughs> they they still have those in a lot of football stadiums. I remember being being a a, a boy going to the game with my dad, and then. Being eye level and just like trying to peek my little guy up over the lip and, and just being eye level to just they're all just looming there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're they're all just a little bit below my head. <laughs> <sighs> Memories. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but we uh still still no podcast. Nope. We're dead in the water. We did a... <sighs> we gave it our best, but our best has not been good enough yet. You know, I I don't feel bad about going after the big boys. You know, mm. we were playing with house money on that last one. Yeah, yeah. That That's... Uh... Yeah, Dr. House... We took all of his money. Yeah. They paid him really well, and he was a really cantankerous asshole. Yeah. Like, he was not very... He could afford to be, though, you know? Yeah. Because he was always right. He was the only doctor who knew what he was doing in that He's... entire hospital. <laughs> and he fucking hated sarcoidosis. Mm-hmm. That's... I feel like I... That has probably changed my opinion on sarcoidosis watching the Dr. House program. Oh, you were pro sarcoidosis prior to House? Well, no, I think I'm a sarcoidosis truther now. Like oh. I don't I don't believe I had a friend who was like, "Oh yeah, I got some bad news. My mom has sarcoidosis." And I was like, "Are you sure?" Might want to get a second opinion. Yeah. Your your mom might have uh, <clears throat> just Maybe she's been carrying around uh, some sort of old piece of irradiated metal as a keepsake for some reason, and that's what's really going on. You just need the most brilliant, cantankerous doctor in the world to figure it out. Yeah. I saw that one time where there there was a real episode where there was a guy who was sick, 
No, they couldn't figure out why. And then Dr. House was like, could it be because of your <clears throat> lucky cooling rod you carry around with you all the time? And he's like, what? This thing's radioactive. <laughs> <laughs> and it was it just a rod of plutonium? <laughs> it's just, it's just, was it glowing? It's a glowing green rod. <laughs> it's like, the rest of the doctors were like, well, we just thought he was coming from a rave. Yeah. DJ did, did we Did we have glow sticks first, or did we have plutonium first? I'm that's, not sure. That's actually... Uh, that's what they use now. They just use glow sticks. It's much safer that way. Turns out that's it. all. That's all you need. It's just the, the green glow is what does it. It doesn't taste very good, but it glows. Good. It sends those chill vibes into the into that uh, that salt bath or whatever they submerge. I wonder why it took so long to get all the other colors. Because for a long time, it felt like all we had was uh, green, yellow, and blue. Yeah, they have uh, they have and infrared purple. ones too. Yeah, they got they got all of them now. Those are the ones that they use for secrets in the military. You can I thought that they they the had don't goggles. like don't ask, don't tell. Like secrets aren't a problem. <laughs> yeah. You put on the night vision goggles and the, your your uh, buddy's butt is glowing. Yeah. You don't need to know about that. I know about the infrared glow sticks because um, uh, one time uh, my brother's friend brought a bunch of glow sticks that he stole from the army on a camping trip and they were the wrong, they were the infrared ones. So. <laughs> All, every snake in the forest could see what was going on, but not not us. And they, boy, did the snakes start coming? Did they? No. A raccoon did. But I think that was because he, of he probably all the, smelled all the a treat. Steak that those boys were eating in the woods. Um, hmm. Huh. That's steak in the woods. Is, you, never, you never picture a cow in the woods. Yeah. It's a cow in the woods. It's like eating pizza on an airplane. Never happens. Doesn't belong there. <laughs> What's going on? Pizza for ground. <laughs> Pizza not for sky. <laughs> What's a boat food? I, I I don't know if I've ever had a boat food. I think you're just supposed to drink drinks on a boat. That's all I've ever done. Yeah. So if you're out out to sea for more than a couple of days, you're gonna <clears throat> have to get creative. You know. Yeah, man. Put put that. Pit, I mean, I guess peanuts and potato chips can't can't be the only thing yeah. you eat. You put a pe- a couple of peanuts in your Coca Cola, and um, you know, just uh, blend that stork. Just put them in there and make a fine puree. Hmm. I don't. I don't think I've ever had a. a a peanut flavored soda. Really? I think that is an actual thing with people in the South. They put a peanuts in their Coca Cola. I've had boiled peanuts, but I've I've never done that. These are just lightly fizzed. Okay. But they but they're soaking in the same stuff they use to take blood off the highway or something does, like that. Does it make does What's it, the what's the thing that people always say Coca Cola will eat up your insides? Well, I, I know that they, they say that if you put uh, a green penny into a glass of Coca-Cola, like if you take it out a couple hours later, all the green will be gone. It'll eat. Eat the green? Yeah. Well, that's healthy, eating eating green stuff, yeah. right? It'll help that's you what eat you're that rabbit food that yeah. you're so opposed to eating. Yeah. You know, you put a penny in a salad for a couple of days, turns into a nickel. Wow. Yeah. What what happens if you put a nickel in there? Uh you choke. <laughs> it's, it's a big coin. Too big. Heavy. Too, Too heavy for five yourself. cents. Like yeah. I mean, why are they going out of their way to like I mean that thing's gotta cost more than five cents to make. Yeah. I'd it's a whopper. About, 
I I just keep trying it, and I, I got to be honest, these salads are nickel and diming me to death. <laughs> Literally, I, I have not passed anything out of my bowel, and it jingles like a coin purse <laughs> when I sit down. You need to go down to the uh, uh, grocery store and take a shit in the coin star. <laughs> just... <laughs> let let that t- <laughs> sit on the coin star machine. You know somebody's taking You're a like, shit. I, the coin I, star's I, like I swallowed a lot of pennies. I, just, I swallowed some pennies. Just excuse me for a second. <laughs> just sitting on the coin star with your pants down. This, this turd's too valuable to flush. <laughs> oh, oh no. Ugh. Yeah, and then they kick you out, and you gotta go through it in the back alley like before. Just, there's my AirPods. You know, dissection. It's like mm. an owl pellet or a, a, a fetal pig, except it's your own feces and you got to get your money back. Just There's an idea for a reality show. Million dollar owl pellet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the cash cab, but you're gonna, your hands are going to get dirty. Let's let's just make it like the the lottery. <laughs> you can go to the gas station and be like, "Yeah, give me five pellets." <laughs> what I what are these gonna have a doubloon in it? Is I it, promise. Is it, one was gonna have a... It's just a it's a game show like a reality game show called Million Dollar Owl, and we just release four people in an owl sanctuary, and we're like, "We fed one of these owls." A, v- a very nice ruby. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're just chasing the owls around trying to catch Can it be shits. at night time? Can we give them the, the those old MTV fear uh, uh, body camera devices yeah. where, where there's just like a light flashing in their face and a camera and it's like a weird... Oh, we'll do it like... Uh, it's like Dr. Octopus giving you a hug. It'll be like the dating in the dark. We'll just do it with, with night vision cameras. And then they're just running around. And that'll make sure that the owls are... You the know, owls are active. They're hunting. Yeah. We're also going to release a lot of muskrats in there. <laughs> and It's going to be... <laughs> be... You have to find the ruby before the muskrat does. <laughs> Well, he loves yeah, but, shiny I mean, objects. The the muskrat eats the ruby, then the owl is going to eat it, and you know, just be two rubies. Ball next stays week. in play. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, if you swallow, <laughs> if you swallow gems, then you you poop out double gems. No, I'm just saying, like, we're going to introduce one new gem each week. Oh. But if a muskrat gets it, he's going to eat it. This is his home. This is his environment. Yeah. He lives in a nightmare. Like every, it's just like his <laughs> his his life is being uh, hunted by by the many many owls in this enclosure and and four covetous humans. <laughs> yeah, all we gotta in we gotta make sure rubies. we can't let any of these muskrats out. No, that's how it works. It's like the it's like the lottery. Like because clearly, like the 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 strongest owl will be the one that eventually amasses all of the rubies. And that's your million dollar owl. It's like one year, once a year during sweeps week, <clears throat> the owl total gets up. <laughs> it's on the billboard. Now, now uh... the owl has seventy three <laughs> rubies. They're like changing the number on the <laughs> billboard outside the gas station. Oh shit! That owl is up to seventy three rubies. I gotta get into this. I hope that the the board <sighs> next to it that says. Uh... Days without an injury stays at zero to to four or five. <laughs> yeah, that's like know. I I want a like I I want this to be an oversaturated environment. Like I I want too many owls and too many muskrats. <laughs> like I I want I want our contestants to be wading through muskrats. <laughs> Muskrats so desperate and so desensitized that they're just they're, resorting to cannibalism. We're gonna have to buy all these people rubber pants. <laughs> yeah, rubber uh, muskrat proof, uh, muskrat bite proof. We'll just get those uh, cranberry bog pants. Yeah, just be in a big muskrat bog. <laughs> 
<laughs> trying to catch Al shit and, in the and, dark. And, and don't don't try to look up to see the moon because it's going to be blotted out by Al flesh. <laughs> All right, do you have any uh, <laughs> podcast ideas this week? I mean, I do, but uh, I, I'm much more excited about my new television idea that I'm going to go and pitch. Yeah, that's TM. You can't uh, have it. Oh, well. well. No, you can have it. I was saying that to the listener. Oh, yeah, we're, we're going to sell that bitch. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I've got... Hmm... There's poop in the French fries. <laughs> okay. And I've I've just noticed I I, I enjoy all the uh, sort of blogs on the internet talking about uh, your bad experiences at restaurants, from both uh, the customer standpoint and the employee standpoint. And so I've never encountered that in podcast form where we can sort of just uh compile uh horror stories it, it's just gonna be uh your worst restaurant experiences uh and uh if there's poop in it it plays if it if it's if there's poop in it it plays yeah. i was trying to think of uh if it bleeds it leads but, yeah. yeah i was too <laughs> uh, if it if it sharts it starts <laughs> Yeah, I um, but I, I've I've heard, and and also maybe we should uh, investigate because I I've heard a lot of stories and it feels a lot of times like you get started on your bad restaurant story and somebody's always got one to top it. Yeah, and so maybe maybe we go behind their backs and just you know verify that this really happened. Like, were yeah. you guys really just French frying turds? Yeah, were, were you doing that? We'll be like the Malcolm Gladwell, but for restaurant poop. Yeah. We'll be like, well, maybe poop isn't that bad in French fries. And the NPR music starts. <laughs> you know, it goes into a deep fryer. That, that that fries everything bad out and fries everything good in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe fried turd, not as bad as you think. I, I know that uh, people would got you? me to eat bugs, and I was like, like a child me would have been like, bugs. But I, I'll eat bugs now. You can just give me a handful of bugs. I'll eat them. Yeah, maybe, maybe try a dookie. <laughs> uh, folks, maybe this will, uh, maybe this will spark your interest. One of these fried dookies has a ruby hidden inside of it. <laughs> Maybe that's what we do. It's it's uh, it's secretly just tricking people into eating poop by telling them that uh, there's a ruby inside of a poop. I I think that should be the new uh, Monopoly game. <laughs> I mean, McDonald's. there's not a lot of trust, McDonald's. So just uh, start adding gems in your your Dookie patties. One of these hamburgers is not a real hamburger. It's a dookie, but it's full of money. Also, introduce the sandwich called the Duke of Earl McDonald's. <laughs> it will go over big. <clears throat> Burger Duke. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't say it like that, though. You know how you have to say it right. I just think that that, that would be a great uh, kind of... A, competitive pivot if they just uh kind of stepped on the burger king's cape while he was trying to walk by <laughs> making the burger duke <laughs> uh, man there's so many fun horror horror characters that you know like they wouldn't let me see any of these movies when i was a kid and I thought they were so adult. Horror movies are some of the most childish movies there are. Yeah. 
And I know that they do all these uh, Halloween, uh, like, oh, the Universal Monsters are coming out to play. Come, come, come down to Universal Studios on Halloween, and you know, you know, pat Frankenstein on his flat head and give pat- the the Wolfman a, a like a back uh, scratch because it's itchy. It's hairy back there. Star uh, of Frankenstein, Pat Frankenstein, <laughs> will be here. But. R- I, I, I guess what I'm wanting, really, now that I'm thinking about it, is I want an A24 uh, theme park. An A24 theme I want, I want theme to, park. you know, mid, Midsummer would would make for a very good ride. The, the Witch. Yeah. With uh, just like a, it'd be one of those roller coasters inside of a building and just like Black Phillip is just uh, pulsating on all the walls as you go around, giving you suggestions of what you should do. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, <clears throat> I've always had a problem with horror movies. Pretty Woman, True Romance, Risky Business, <laughs> Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. <laughs> All these horror movies. American Gigolo. <laughs> I had to look up a list. Was it worth it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. That's a good joke. <laughs> you said taxi driver, right? Ah, rats! <laughs> I was just trying to think of one. Like ah. you, you, you. The only thing I didn't like about that was you. You had all the ones I would have gone to, and I was like, child prostitute. <laughs> They're all taken from me. <laughs> yeah, it's like the only one left is a child prostitute. <laughs> That's not true. There are many films with many plenty, prostitutes. Plenty, plenty. There's a bunch here. I don't There's know like any no, of these are. No reason. The Electric Mist. What is that? What? Mist is water, and water and electricity don't mix. Hmm. Also, wood and wood, wood and water don't mix. So use a coaster. Milk money. Yeah, that's 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 got Ed Harris and Melanie Griffith in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that kid's new stepmom's a, a hooker. Ooh-wee. That's what that movie's about. All right, I gotta stop looking at prostitute movies. We're trying to do uh, trying to do a show here. I'm trying to remember why it's called Milk Money. I think it's because little boys hire a prostitute. Oh yeah, with their milk money. Like they in, in my money. brain, I was like, I was like, is All she right, like one friends. of the like? Is she trying to sell her breast milk? Here's <laughs> I saw somebody do that on like Jerry Springer. They showed like the like little little I think you got like a three or four ounce bottle of it. It was, it was you can buy anything on the internet, folks. Boy, it's crazy. Could you imagine? And everybody's like, oh boo and then they're secretly going home and looking it up. Be like, oh yeah, I wanna know. <laughs> Fifty dollars for a three ounce <laughs> bottle of milk, yeah. Yeah. You can have my milk money. All right, I got an idea for a podcast here. Okay, what do you got? This is called The West Wang, the Presidential Penis Podcast. Okay. So this would be, uh, I figure we got 40, 45 of them so far. Well, really only 44 uh, Wangs, but... There aren't very many living wangs, though. We could do a we could do a young Grover Cleveland penis, and a, and then like a later in life Grover. We've seen some things. Yeah, counts as two different. Uh... Yeah, at, at one point in time, it was a functioning penis. Later on, he was the president. However, so you just kind of had to deal with uh, the fact that he had. A very uncomfortable splint apparatus <laughs> affixed to it and pretend like that was not happening. Think about the scaffolding that's always on the Washington Monument and get, get a, a picture. Yeah, so a, a kind of a whalebone implant. That, uh, do, you think, uh, do you think JFK had a circumcision? I don't know. 
There's a lot I don't know about <laughs> circumcisions, but I think I, I think making this podcast, I'd probably learn a lot about them. Yeah, I feel like we could do a lot of uh, a lot of deep dives, a lot of research. I didn't know that I was circumcised <laughs> until <laughs> until I was a late teenager, and I was just like, I assumed I wasn't. Like I was, I was just picturing like a big old divot in the tip of this thing. <laughs> You just thought the end would be gone. No, like, I I mean, I'd never, you know, uh, all the depictions in our our sex education uh, uh, pamphlets and what, whatever, health books, showed a circumcised penis. Is... So I thought it was weird to be circumcised, and it was just like, more or less cutting your nose off to spite your face sort of, cutting, sort of thing. Cutting your dick I guess off it to might spite your balls. It. Yeah. It's like, why, why, like, why would I want to measure up a, an eighth of an inch shorter? Yeah. I'm, I'm already just, like, jamming this uh, <laughs> this ruler into my, like, uh, bodily crevice as far as I can. <laughs> <laughs> the West Wing, and I, I'm, I'm curious to see. I feel like part of this would be just uh, getting an idea of uh, <laughs> what kind of uh, president-related penis information is available out there. You know? Yeah, and I, I think we're going to find that there's a lot of information for presidents from the past thirty years. And then there's going to have to be a lot of legwork done on the older ones. But it, it, I, I like the idea of it uh, being a show that is current of the moment. Things that are uh, people are talking about right now. But also, that that's a part of history that's very interesting to me. And uh, one that I feel like it's uh, commonly glossed over. Yeah. One of the more private parts of history. <laughs> uh, what else you got? You got another idea here? Uh, first, uh, uh, before we go out, uh, out and do all of our research, uh, which president do you assume has the biggest penis? Whoo! You know they they say that what um was it Johnson? They used to t- they used to talk a lot of talk a lot of shit about his, how big his penis was. Um, are you talking about uh, LBJ? I'm yeah. guessing. Not, I, I don't think Andrew, Andrew Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> like I don't think that's your namesake. Yeah, beloved Democrat Andrew Johnson. Well, he is from Texas, and you know what they say about Texas. Yeah. <clears throat> don't mess with Steve. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's why every Texan just incredibly horny. Nobody will mess with them. Balls is blue as the sea. Do you have another? Uh... Oh, Ooh. um, yes, I do. He's winding up for the yeah, fastball. Yeah, no, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, no, no. This this is a public service for everyone. Um, it's dutiful and tutoriful. Dutiful. And tut- <laughs> I, I should have come up with a better name. It's it's a tutorial podcast because everybody that is growing up now plays a video game, and there there's a like a period of time where their hands being held and they're being shown how to do everything. And there's just a whole lot of stuff in life that doesn't have a tutorial for it. And oh, it's like a oh. tutorial podcast. Interesting. Now this is this is a public service. And so you'd be like, well, today we're going to teach you how to go grocery shopping. Yeah. Now, as you're entering the grocery store, uh, I've activated your targeting reticule. <laughs> You can use the left thumbstick <laughs> to move to the right and to the left and forward and back. Use the right thumbstick to look around. And when your targeting reticule hovers above an actionable object, 
It will glow blue. You've selected Zatarain's Dirty Rice. <laughs> you dirty boy. Oh, 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 oh. What are you going to do with what that? What are you going to do with that rice, you bad boy? You're not just going to make that mm. rice by itself. I no, know you're no, going no. to get some stinky pork, maybe some. Oh. Dirty fucking shrimp to put in that rice. Oh, you're such a bad little slut. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, it it, it can also, like, teach you how to, you know, uh, mend a fence. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you want that fence. Tie your fucking shoes, Mm. you little bitch. (laughs) What are you, little baby? Does baby not want to... Oh, oh, look at baby's little crying face. Oh, oh. You've become encumbered. (laughs) Press option to open the items menu. (laughs) I don't know. I I wasn't envisioning this when, when, when I came up with this. I really did have... Uh, the best of intentions, but now <laughs> it's just, it's, I, I think I just want to do round two of the JOI podcast. <laughs> but this time we're we're telling you how to make uh, ants on a log. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, um, all right. Here's my. You got another one. Uh, here's my next idea. Um, this one is called "What It's Like to Be a Woman." Okay, that'd just be where we explore what it's like to be a woman. Okay, so is this going to be the kind of thing where? Because there's a lot of stuff that I can't like readily simulate. Are you talking about? giving a good honest effort and trying to do things that that women have to do that we don't do that we could uh i mean honestly i was i, I wasn't going to take it that deep it just more like us like kind of a thought experiment you know like what would you what would you do if you were a woman and my answer of course is stand naked in front of the mirror all day long yeah yeah and then just like jack off a, a wing that's not there i i it takes me a good long time to adjust to change. Just day day one, it's gonna be a loss. I'm, I'm gonna be trying to pee standing up, and it's gonna be a big fucking mess that I will not clean up. Uh, that's yeah. It would just yeah. Even in the fantasy where you are a woman, you're still just trying to tug your pud. <sighs> No, I'm gonna. That's the kind of frustrations that that. women have to live with every day. No, just disappointing. No pud. Yeah. Just wake up and they're like, "Damn, damn, no pud." (laughs) Go to the bathroom at work. uh It's a double-edged sword, you know. Hey, hey. Sometimes there are just people who try to punch you in it, though. Where's the pud? Yeah. I think we just came up with our next uh, bit of merch. It's the Where's the Pud Lady t shirt. Yeah. <laughs> send, send an email to We Don't Have a Podcast Yet at gmail.com. Uh, and, uh, let us know if you want a Where's the Pud Lady t shirt. Well, I mean, the. <sighs> Just an old lady. The, the biggest got a pair things of I can't pulled out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where is the pun? <laughs> never, never figured out her own body. They, like they've never, like every time they make a body swap movie, <sighs> people like there's a very relatively short period of time where they figure out what's happened. Yeah. What if that spanned the entire movie? Dude, where's my pud? <laughs> and, and they the the two people never figure out who they bought like that they body swap. <laughs> Even though they're like staring in in their mother's face, they're just like, 
Where'd my penis go? And, they, and then their mom's just like, what the shit? Where'd my titties go? Where's, I guess I don't know. Mom, mom, so what my, if they were as dumb as the people that, that the movie was made for? Mm. Oh. It's, 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 it is, dude, where's my car? But it's, dude, where's my pud? Mm. What was that supposed to be about? It, it was like a. It, oh, it was, it was the, if we were women. No, you were saying the next one, and I just went back into the. Didn't you already? Did you? Did I not? I I I honestly uh, can't remember. We've gone so I, hard. I don't know. Rails. Like uh, the, the, this whole time, I've been like, we're just doing this. Uh, like we we got to bring this back around, <laughs> and oh. Uh, I did, I did the tutorial one, and I did uh, Poop in the French Fry, so I've done two. Oh, that's right, because I did the um, the West Wing, and then the one for ladies, or one <coughs> for men who want to know what it's like I, I kind of to be a lady. Just I, walk around all day, like, I like wondering the, where your penis went. I like the idea of doing the one for ladies, but I don't think that we would know how to do that podcast without direction. Well, I think this is what's been missing from the conversation is, I mean, you can hear it from a woman, what they think it's like to be a lady, but this would be um, the first time that um, you've had a a serious look at what men think it's like to be a lady. (laughs) Well, I mean, like what, what's some lady stuff like periods. Okay. Gossip. Uh, I can Lo- do the gossip Loving one. gay celebrities. I already do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I not, uh, one every- time had a hemorrhoid that burst at work, so I I know about the period part. Oh, I okay, I thought you were going to say you knew about the pain pants. of childbirth with that one. <laughs> <laughs> I also one time shit a whole baby out of my ass. <laughs> I feel like Relax. that's a really good one, but it's a scary one. And one I'd want to make sure I did a really good job at. That the at, at having a baby out your I'm ass. I'm gonna be a lady. I'm gonna I'm gonna poop the biggest baby out of my the ass. Best ever damn been. ass baby you ever seen. Look at how big his head is. It's as big as a basketball. He's gonna be basketball Jones. Biggest little butt baby in the yeah. NBA. It's weird to me that basketball Jones is a Cheech and Chong thing. It's weird to me that it isn't. More but, of a Cheech and Chong <laughs> okay. thing. Yeah. They should have uh, Cheeched and or Chonged it up a little bit more. <laughs> I increased the Cheech levels by 12%. It's really cool that they... Turn they down the n- Chong... <laughs> mix the Chong into the... In, the back put a put a little more bass on that chong and then uh, just we want the treble on the cheech real clear <laughs> let the cheech ring out <laughs> all right um we have a, a a listener submitted question or uh, idea for a podcast this one comes from John. John writes, a podcast about jaywalking. Is it safe? No. No. I mean, Jay Leno is there to make a fool out of you. Yeah. He's not going to make you look good. He's he's there you to make himself that, look good. You see that chin headed towards you and you're like just hanging out. And um, where did they do that? Like on the back lot of uh, some 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 place in Burbank, I think. Yeah, somewhere they do it on the Martha's Vineyard. No, that's not what I'm thinking of. What's the what's the place where all the rollerbladers hang out? The roller uh, Chelsea right. Chelsea no. Pier. In New York. Yeah. That's where the rollerbladers hang out. No, in California. 
Santa Monica? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. All these things are just words that are said to me. I've never seen any of these places where I know. We're just a, cu- a couple of simple Kentucky goofs <laughs> yeah. who've never where, seen the world. Where, 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 where did they play the basketball from the white men can't jump? Where'd they, what did they do to men with the big muscles they rolling playing around? Boy, oh boy, Holly. I weird. hope there aren't real tall hills up there. I mean, it's hard to stop. Yeah, you best watch out <laughs> for coyotes. <laughs> Whoo! <laughs> they should just have uh, lots of little uh, roller bladiums about, just like like small little velodromes, but just for rollerblading. So they just roller go around drum. and circum roller drums. Yeah, yeah. Make it happen. Yeah. And you can also, like, if it's really popular, you can build one of those circular car garages around it so the people who are going inside are parking just a a big cylinder. Yeah. A big, sexy rollerblading cylinder. Yeah. Get Get in the tube. Get in the cylinder. Coward. It's the... That's the... That's the... Large roller blade drawn collider. (laughs) <laughs> we're looking for that um, I was trying to think of some sort of a pun on the Higgs boson but I couldn't Higgs boson sounds like a time traveling detective some kind of a particle that goes boson back boson makes me it, it seems like a like a cowboy th- I Some think it's cowboy bullshit. People to me. people often mispronounce it boat swain. <laughs> <sighs> All right, folks. Well, we're gonna take a quick commercial break and then we will be back with uh the Podtron forty five hundred. So just sit tight. And we're back. Hey everybody. All right, now let's head over to the Podtron 4500. This is our uh, special uh, computer that uh, takes uh, the most popular podcast titles and tries to uh, make up new ones for us that we can uh, use for inspiration. Excuse me, for inspiration. He's a really smart robot that knows about podcasting. Here we are. All right. I got one right right off the bat. Yeah, Holy what moly. You, what do you got there? This is called Star Work. Star Work? Star Work. Now, S- Star Work. Star Work. Yeah, so this would be... Um, is this like when you're the janitor at the planetarium? Yeah, well, I was thinking of this. Planetarium, be... not torium. Planetarium. <laughs> they got all the planets in there. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was thinking this would be kind of a. I think that. I don't know. Did you see that last Star War? Yeah, I saw that. The, the most recent Star War. You know, as a veteran of many Star War, many a Star War. Yeah. Not not the worst Star War, but certainly there have been better Star Wars than that. It really uh, it really just kind of uh, put a nice bow on the uh, only fancy people ever get to be important in the Star War. Kind yeah. Of. Yeah. I I think that Star Work could be kind of like uh like dirty jobs, but it exists in the Star Wars universe. I I think that that's sorely needed and I I think that Disney's going to probably hear this podcast. They'll hear probably it. Uh, write us a check that says, "Hey, you can't do that as you. You're doing that as us. You're us now. You're You work welcome, for the mouse boys. Welcome to the family. Where are the ears? 
We're not a big fan. Like you, you have to disavow everything you've done with with our goofy character, though. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be on the hook for a lot of other stuff that we've done, but I think that this is gonna be the one. It's us, and we're like, hey, we're here. We're here on the uh, on the planet Tatooine. Yeah, and uh, we're here with the both. The, these are the Womp Rat Control <laughs> workers. Yeah. They've got to round up these womp rats. The womp rats are everywhere. I'm going to do Jawa sex work. Ooh. It's going to be like a real sex episode. Yeah. Just following around the Jawa sex workers as they're uh, just trolling Moss Espa. Also, there's just, I mean, the, the cleaning crews. Everything is so beautifully clean. Everything's a perfect white. There's never any shit smears anywhere. And you know that there are a lot of tiny little hands buffing those off. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm down to buff some space shit off of some uh, yeah. space walls. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Talk to that guy who uh, trains the Rancor for Job of the Hut. Yeah. That big shirtless guy. Imagine, like, if if they don't have like any uh, stylish executions to do, uh, that that one, uh, just a uh, uh, monster mouth in the middle of the desert. I can't think of what it's called. The sarlacc. The sarlacc. Like, uh, how do you satiate the sarlacc? Uh, like, what would we would you know? Do you just like? Set up a ramp and just uh, have cows walk into that's, it. I don't know. Yeah, but, but that's once a year they just uh, they just back a truck up and just dump loose all, meat in all, there. All of the irregular skittles just into the sarlacc. <laughs> <laughs> the skittle factory's like these ones are all lopsided. Uh, we made too many sloppy them. joes. Give them to the sarlacc. Like we got a, we got a whole shipping container full of these uh, Buffalo Bills Super Bowl championship T-shirts. <laughs> Feed them to the Sarlacc. Oh, Sarlacc's not picky. America didn't like the Mighty Wing McDonald's. <laughs> Don't freeze them for six months and then reintroduce them with a slightly different name. But uh, you know what? Give them to the Sarlacc. <laughs> All all of your worst mistakes disappear down the Sarlacc. <laughs> all right, Sarlacc. Uh, Do you buy a present for your significant other but lost the receipt and don't want to return it? Throw it down the Sarlacc. <laughs> she dumped you? Throw it down the Sarlacc. Sarlacc's just full of old Olester and potato chips. It's the worst we're, part about it. You go, <laughs> you go down the Sarlacc pig, you're going to get diarrhea. That's a question I never asked, and knowing myself, I don't know how I never asked it, but how does Sarlacc poop? I, I think the Sarlacc poop underneath into the ground. How does Sarlacc never rise up? Now, I think in the in the Super Nintendo game, the Sarlacc does rise up, and it's quite an ordeal. Is it because it poops so much? <laughs> <laughs> it's just... It rises up on a geyser. I mean, it's of poop. pretty much like a a cave with teeth. Yeah, sand cave with teeth. Sand cave with teeth. Sarlacc monster. He like he he like uh, he, him got other body parts because <laughs> him just big mouth to me. Does him got GI tract? Does him him got poop hole? It was originally just a man, but then people kept putting terrible shit in his mouth. <laughs> he mutated into a giant hole. Yeah. He's just full of the Arch Deluxe. <laughs> All of history's greatest mistakes fill up Sarlacc. Star Wars. Big and tasty, not tasty <laughs> enough? Down the Sarlacc. Let's get all the... Make sure you hit the flesh, you know, hit the little handle, hit the silver handle on the Sarlacc. He's got that, uh, the, the, uh, the Cheeto fries from Burger King. 
Cheeto fries. I think that was a thing. Or maybe they were chicken fries, but they were Cheeto. Oh, those those fries. those are beloved. Yeah. Chicken fries are be- they they also had the saddest fries. Not the saddest fries. <laughs> it was supposed to be a satisfy, but it was a saddest fry and they were crinkle, but they 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 had thirty percent less cholesterol or something and they tasted terrible and yeah. nobody ever ordered them because you had to say a stupid word. Yeah. Burger King never figured that out. Nobody wants to say a stupid word. You we all want to sound like James Bond when we're ordering our fast food. <laughs> No, nobody wants to say Chris Sandwich. I, I, it's been two decades of me saying, I'll have the bacon, egg, and cheese croissant, please. Croissant, which me. I, I don't know. It's just, I ate it, but I just don't feel satisfied. I think that there could be a punk song about uh, how unsatisfied you are. Oh, I can't get no satisfaction. <laughs> no, no, no. Star work. I think I think a little brown sugar might help those satisfies out. Mm. All right, star work. All right, I got another one. Uh, it's called Collect Baseball. Collect Baseball. And uh, I got a couple different ways that this could go because I rem- I fondly remember the Coleco vision. I was about for- to say Coleco baseball. Yeah, uh, but also um, uh, I had a beloved family member die who was a, a a really big baseball fan, and I inherited all of her autographed baseballs. So this could could maybe be a, a thing where it's like. I've got these things that have a questionable, possible real-life value to them, and maybe this could be a podcast where... Can I sell some of these this, these fucking baseballs? I've got, like, 200 autographed baseballs just in a box, and I'm half these people. I'm like, I vaguely remember this guy. <laughs> some of them, I'm like, I don't think this guy ever got out of AAA. <laughs> This is a baseball. So if you collect baseball, uh, talk to me. Specifically, if, if if you're a fan of the Cleveland Indians from 1993 to 1999, if you, I've got the baseballs. If you ever needed a baseball that was autographed by wrestling legend Spike Dudley. <laughs> he's just a little guy, but he's got a big heart. He does. He was... Yeah, he. You know what? I take it back. I'd buy a baseball autographed by Spike Dudley. I that would be in my keep. Spike, pile. Spike. We know you're a fan. Send us some autographed baseballs. Yeah, and and I'm just gonna go ahead and say, uh, there's only one one Albert Bill she got, and that's mine because uh, I I love me some Albert Bill. <laughs> He, he's he's the one who. What was his big song? Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, I, I think that uh, there were a lot of them in that uh, French animated film, The Triplets of Belleville. So all, <laughs> all Albert Bell joints. Boo! Man. First thing I could think of with <clears throat> Bell spelled B E L L E. Oh wait, is his name spelled like that? Yeah. Like, what if there was another guy named, like, Adam Beast? <laughs> I mean, there there is an entire team from Milwaukee. The Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. All right. I got, I got another one here. What you got? It's called the Car Stool Show. Car Stool. And I think this would be... Um, a show for people who uh, poop in their cars, <laughs> <laughs> or who maybe um want to make a car out of a toilet. I think that's a thing that people do, like a uh, weird small town. Uh, you know, when they have like, oh, it's uh, blueberry days. We have a. Uh, the you know we have the the parade 
and then the you know the mayor comes out and uh, declares the the blueberry queen and then we have the motorized toilet race oh one of those i was going the opposite way wait where is it <laughs> i was like 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 you just take the like inner the... shell the 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 most important part of a porta potty and then just put a car around it <laughs> like like you ever go to like a we're a 1950s diner. All of our, our all of our tables are inside of Cadillac convertibles. Yeah, so this would be like a, you're driving around in like a brand new like a hom- hybrid Toyota Camry. It's got all red leather interior, but then a five gallon bucket full of sawdust for the driver's seat. <laughs> I don't know if it's a hybrid. Shouldn't. Shouldn't your 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 dookie go straight into the tank and somehow be fuel? <laughs> just like can, can like, we make a car that runs on poop like and 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 it just smells like farts behind it, but it smells <laughs> fine if you're riding in it. It just has a little it has like a little cool chrome badge on the back opposite where it says Camry, then it says like dookie power. <laughs> Do dual exhaust. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, car stool. Car stool. It's just. Uh, also, you you could just uh, come out with a line of really nice, like uh, bar stools, that somehow look like cars. I know that they had a lot of success trying to make beds look like cars. Why not stools? Yeah. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Well, I was going to say maybe just like it looks like the seat of a car, but I think that's a gaming chair. Yeah. <sighs> that's a tough one because you don't want it to look like a car that's just like driving straight up your butt either. Yeah. You definitely don't want that. I don't know. Like, and, and does anybody want to open a door to sit on a stool? I, th- I just had this idea. It's a little off track, but yeah. what if you made a stool that looked like Superman, like flying straight up, but it was just like flat at like where his head and shoulder is. So it looked like he was going like one, one extended arm first up your butt when you sat down on it. Can you mm. picture what I'm talking about? Like I a, can like picture a little it. half half scale Superman going straight up your butt when you're sitting at the bar. <laughs> Why not get the 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 whole Justice League in yeah, the, on this? Yeah, the Green Lantern, the Martian Manhunter, they're all flying up your ass. <laughs> Maybe Wonder Woman's wrangling a turd with her uh, lasso of justice. <laughs> She's. Got- it's just a glass. It's a. It's it's the back three quarters of a glass fighter jet. That you're sitting. <laughs> oh on. yeah. A little a little Wonder Woman. You'll never see it coming. In, in suspended in loose sight. Yeah. So uh, hey, ABC. I hear or not ABC. Who is it? CBS. Who? Who you? AT and T. I think AT and T owns DC Comics now, and they're saying that oh. if five G doesn't work, <clears throat> like if it's not a huge hit, that they're going to stop. They're going to liquidate DC Comics. Oh no! That's a real. That's a real headline. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah! Though, because you know who's going to buy it? Us, and then we're going to convert it into a, into a basically a series of semi erotic. Uh, Funny bar stools. We we can't afford it. Disney's gonna buy it. Oh, and then finally we'll get that. We'll get that Batman. Batman versus Vision movie. We've yeah. all been wanting so badly. Yeah. I'm I'm really looking forward to. Uh... Solomon <sighs> Grundy. Twenty. 20- 
and Solomon Grundy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of like, uh, uh. <laughs> Solomon Grundy in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Steampunk he's Grundy. The, he's, he's in those he's in those future sewers. In the future Solomon uh, Grundy born on a Monday, twenty forty nine. But what happens when they make clothes that are like tatter proof? Oh. Like all of his branding's gonna Go down the Sol- toilet to Solomon where he lives. Solomon Grundy, but he's just got on the uh, Logan's Run clothes. <laughs> <laughs> he's way past. What? What is it? Thirty or thirty-five? Were they? Were they? Solomon Grundy, and he's just one of the red shirt ensigns on a Star Trek <laughs> ship. <laughs> it becomes like a Groundhog Day. It's Solomon Grundy. Uh, just getting crushed by a rock on every episode, but then coming back. I'm, Solomon Grundy's personality is very similar to Bizarro. He's like a a little more grounded in history, Bizarro. <laughs> I think that Marvel could use use a Grundy or two. I'm trying to think of somebody who fills that role. He is nothing if not a historical figure. <laughs> <laughs> Put Solomon Grundy in Hamilton too. Hamilton too. Colin they, 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 they Grundy. Need a, they need a. They need a. They need a. They need a. What, what, what's the What's the super smart gorilla's name? Gorilla. Amy Grod. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Gorilla Grod. Like gorilla's his first name. Grod and Grundy need to need to be in. Like they, those are two things that Marvel doesn't have. Yeah. I did good. Yeah. Just Hamilton to is Grundy twenty forty nine. So why why did they go with five G? Why didn't they just call it six G? I've been waiting for them to do that uh um there's something about Mary joke with the the eight minute abs and seven minute abs thing. Like just skip a number. Nobody know. Like there, there's no basis in any yeah. sort of science with these numbers. Just skip one one time, and then everybody will know you're serious. Yeah, you just go straight to the straight straight to the six G. We had three G, we had four G, and I got five G, eight G. Just jump right up to eight G, or go into the teens. Like <clears throat> skip a bunch of them and just be like. We're blowing it all out. Nineteen G. Well, Jeez, that's a lot of G's. Jeez, Jeez Louise. Yeah, that's free free advice for T-Mobile or anybody really, but especially if you want to uh, trade trade that idea in exchange for the rights to Solomon Grundy, so that we can make our gritty. Steampunk future. Or if you want to buy any of my baseballs. We'll trade a couple of baseballs. We'll give you a baseball. A couple of baseballs for Solomon Grundy. We could do that, too. You I got... don't even think Marvel's going to want them. Like, can, can we... Can we get your lesser... Can we Can we start a B-team cinematic universe? Or, you know, I mean, not even really B. They, they've they already made the B-team part of it. Yeah. Just like the, just the odds and ends, you know, just the... Get the <laughs> flaming carrot cinematic universe. Yeah. I think, damn it, no, the mystery men are in that universe. Somebody already owns it. <sighs> All right, well, I've got another Podtron one here. Okay. Um, So, you're creek and oming. We've already done oh, this Oh, we did one. that one? <laughs> shoot, shoot. I got another one. The Rised Batch and Order with Matter. The Rise Batch. And Order. And Order with Matter. And I, I think that this is going to be a... Uh, all T's are crossed. All I's are dotted. Uh, we're, we're, this, this is a fight against entropy, is what this podcast is. 
this is about the rise batch, which is something we we rolls. baked. Yeah. yeah, we we baked some rolls and it bat and in, in, in this batch and it rised. And this podcast is all about order with matter and how things are supposed to behave and not how they don't. And when they're supposed to rise, they don't. And when they're supposed to rise more, they fall and they dimple in and I have to throw them all away again. And what the fuck? So we ba- we bake a bunch of rolls and then we get really personal about how good they are. Maybe name them. I, I, I keep think, them around and and start also, to assign like good luck or bad luck to certain ones of them. Just uh, uh yeah, well, I want to assign names that are like human names. Kevin. All, all all of the the rules of physics, and when when they aren't behaving how they are, I'd be like, Kevin, you're supposed to stay in motion. I'm gonna leave you home alone <laughs> on Christmas. You don't get to go to Paris. Like all eight-year-old boys want to do. Higgs boson. <laughs> you will obey the laws of time. Stop gonna, solving crimes. I'm going to blister that little butt, you quark. Jonathan Gravity. <laughs> I am going to make your ass look like two Japanese flags. <laughs> So that's what that one would be. We got that one right. We got it. We nailed we, it. We didn't have to. F- I feel like we don't even have to do a whole a whole we, episode. We didn't have to wait around to the water on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Just took a piss right in it. Mm. All right. So what? A, what? What out of these are you? Uh, <laughs> out of all of the ideas that we've had, we had the um, what it's like to be a woman. We had the um, the other one that I uh, came up with. Uh, mine, mine was uh, uh, somebody took a poop in the French fries. West Wang and the tutorial. We had the one about jaywalking. We had the uh, the car stool show. Yeah, and the uh, star work. <laughs> I, I I I it's disconcerting how many of the podcasts that we talk about and sometimes record are like we're all just gonna work for Disney <laughs> by the time we're dead we're, everybody's <clears throat> gonna be a Disney boy. It's all it's it all it all is eventually and that's all wonderful and lead I, to Disney. <laughs> all hail Disney. Um I'm I'm going to make a tentative vote for how to be a woman. <laughs> I also like uh how to be a woman or what it's like to be a woman. What it's like to be a we woman. We don't know how. We're just trying to get in that headspace. So we'll do uh we'll, we'll try how to be a woman. I I also I like that idea a lot. Um if you'd like to hear how to be a woman, uh you can go to we don't have a podcast yet or uh, uh, patreon.com slash we don't have a podcast yet. And there you can sign up to support the podcast. If you support at the, uh, I believe $3 level or above, uh, you can uh, get access to the vault where all of our attempts at a podcast are kept behind a paywall. So check that out. And um, other than that, uh, I'm Nathan P. Woodard. I'm AJ Estes. And uh, buy my baseballs. Buy, <laughs> buy our baseballs. Winchester Cathedral. <laughs>